Hello. Hi. Hi. My name yeah. is Umaid Sharifi. I um, I work at Orthlords. Um, it's an organization out of Afghanistan. Uh, we do uh, street art, murals. Uh, so basically, we use art as a tool for social change in Afghanistan and in the world. Okay. And currently, I'm uh, stuck in Boston. Uh, since I had an exhibition here in the U.S. and after this Corona, I couldn't go back home. Um, so I'm here, and uh, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. My name is uh, Jonknar. I live in Reykjavik, Iceland. I'm a, a comedian, writer. I'm also a playwright. In 2009, I after the financial crisis, I formed my own political. Uh, party, the so-called uh, best party. And it was just a group of me and people who had never been directly involved with, with politics, it was artists, mostly writers and musicians. We won the, won the uh, elections and, uh, and I, was the mayor. <laughs> I was the mayor of Reykjavik for, uh, for four years. Do you see the background I have here? The, the yeah, 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 the eyes. <laughs> The eyes. This is the first mural uh, we did back in 2014. Okay. Uh, and this is how the organization started. We wanted to change the narrative around the Lord because there's a lot of drug lords, war lords, and all the negative lords in Afghanistan. Yeah. But let's introduce the positive lords, uh, which is the art lords. And we did this mural, uh, uh -huh. I See You. Uh, which is the eyes, and um, this is the presidential palace of Afghanistan, by the way. And okay. we, this is, was a campaign against corruption. So it's like the uh, the eyes of the public. It's like the eyes of the common person. Exactly. Who... It, and this is done by all the people. So the moment we go on the streets, we start painting a mural, we invite everybody to join in. So it doesn't matter if you're a, a kid, a woman, a police officer, a person selling stuff on the streets, you just come in, get a brush and start painting. Yeah. It is that platform where everybody gets a voice. Uh -huh. And now we have done around, I think, 1,800 murals all over Afghanistan and, and some other countries. Is that uh, never causing a problem? Afghanistan is, is, is the place uh, that even uh, a normal living will cause yeah. you a lot of problems. Because if you're walking on a street, there is the potential that there's terrorists would do an explosion. We lose a lot of good people in that country. And for us as well, uh, doing murals, and especially against corruption, against countering violent extremism, promoting issues of women's rights and human rights, this yeah. has been very uh, sort of uh, both controversial and also challenging the authority, challenging the terrorists at the same yeah. time. So we did have our share of uh, threats, our share of uh, uh, challenges. Uh, okay. But you know what? This is my country. Uh, we have to do something about it. Uh, well, I find that extremely brave, what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, and, and encouraging. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. How many are you in, in your group? A total of 53 people right now. Yeah, wow. So we have uh, three offices in Kabul. Uh, okay. We have uh, a, a, an art cafe. It's called Rebel Art Cafe. Uh, uh -huh. We have our gallery. Uh, we have our office in Kabul. And then we have uh, one office in four of the provinces, which are the major population areas in Afghanistan. We call them artivists, um, which is uh, artist and activist at the same time. I really admire people who who just dare to do things like you you are doing you know it's just it. you cannot just simply sit around you have to do something it's not we don't think we are doing something extraordinary or brave it's not it's just part of my life and there's a yeah. lot of people like like us back there in afghanistan who are doing this there's a term i i i like to use it's uh the peaceful warrior and i think it's a term i coined from uh, from bruce lee to be a, a peaceful warrior and to fight with uh, peace as your weapon and art as your tool. I am involved in a, in a network, in, a, in an organization called ICORN. It's International Cities of Refuge Network. 
cities that welcome uh, 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 a persecuted, persecuted uh, uh, artist, writer, journalist. So many people have gotten into so much trouble with, with just simply with, with art. If you're an artist in, in, in the part of the world that I live, uh, yeah. it, it means that you're, you're the most vulnerable sect of the society. Yeah. Like Akrons, we also have a new initiative called the uh, Wartists. You know, it's an artist with a W, Wartists. What? And we were thinking about all these artists on the front lines. Just imagine uh -huh. if you're an artist in Yemen or in Libya or in Pakistan or in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. If you do any expression, if you do any work, your life is in danger. Mm -hmm. So what if we find ways to support them? So having support from outside that, that you could at least travel, you could at least have some leverage to talk, to That's share it. your art, share your, 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 your uh, words. I think uh -huh. that is extremely important. The world after this, artists are the people who could raise above everybody else and, 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 and come up with ways and better solutions. Absolutely. When I am asked uh, uh, about my time as mayor here in, in Reykjavik, you know, I would like to say I'm most proud of being able to make uh, Reykjavik an icon city because I think that's probably the most uh, important thing I, I, I was part of. But people don't understand it when you, when you tell them. They don't understand it. Our human rights that we take for granted mm -hmm. are not taken for granted uh, in many, many parts of the world. I know of many comedians who are, you know, in hiding because they made fun of the wrong person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> only True. for a joke about some, True. yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. True. Comics are the best way to, to, to deliver a message, you know, to, to raise above everybody else and, and, and uh -huh. uh, really uh, criticize the status quo. For example, right now in Afghanistan, we have one show which airs every uh, Friday, I think, uh, it, it, in the main TV station. And okay. it's a comedy show. Uh, they are making fun of every situation that we find ourselves from the yeah. president to the, the, the head of the parliament to the police chief. So yeah. these guys are amazing. And these comics, they, they come up every week and night and they make fun of them through music, through sings, through, through dance. And then I think the whole country for that one hour sits around their TV sets and then uh -huh. watches this comic show in, in Afghanistan. It was like really popular. Very popular, very popular. The only chance that you will get to laugh for example, it's rare. In 24 hours, you rarely get a chance or find the reason to laugh, to smile, or, uh -huh. or, 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 or there's lack of uh, empathy and love and kindness because you're living in a, in, in a war zone. So yeah. just imagine a comedian coming over and for one hour making you laugh. Yes. So exactly. it, it really helps the psychology and, and the mental thinking as well. Yeah. In Texas, I did a panel talk with an uh, Egyptian uh, comedian, uh, uh, Basam Youssef. I don't know yes. if you are familiar with him. Yes. I and he, he was really popular in, in, uh, in Egypt and, uh, and had his own uh, uh, TV show and uh, he decided to flee. For me, you know, being like a comedian in... Uh, a, a peaceful country, Western uh, country, you know, like making fun of uh, politicians or whoever, you know. <clears throat> I, w I was physically attacked and then I have got uh, threats. It's nothing close to, to the danger he experienced or what you have experienced in your country. But I have been concerned about people in, in North Korea. I think it's a, a hell hole of a, of a country. Yes. And I think uh, people are suffering enormously. But here in the West, it's usually, it's, it's a joke. Nobody really cares. It's, it's our job to tell the stories because unless the people don't hear the stories of no. the ordinary people, what is happening in, in North Korea right now? The only thing uh -huh. we hear is that Kim Jong-un is dead or not dead. That's, that's the only headline you get. And this has been the same case for the last 15 years. They have reduced North Korea to just one person and one family. But there's a lot yeah. of stories out there. So, for example, right now, this blind date with you, 
from Afghanistan, Iceland, and we are talking about our stories. I think we will contribute to building that story and that the whole picture. The first guest we received here, a writer and poet and journalist from Palestine called Mazen Marouf. Mm-hmm. I was trying to tell people, you know, inspire people, tell how amazing this is. We're welcoming an artist, you know, who was in, in critical danger and, and feared for his life, and he is now safe and writing. You know, I was talking to journalists, friend of, friends of mine, and, you know, say, why, why can't you interview him, you know, do something and, and, and do, to get it out? And it was like, yeah, but people lack information and so on. And, and then he was uh, shortlisted. He was nominated for the Man Booker uh, Literary Prize. And then suddenly, <laughs> got, yeah, and it was amazing. It was brilliant. Then, then uh, you know, people wanted to interview him. Because once you have personal stories, once you know a person, then yeah. you give, you give uh, some time and attention to, to go on and study that place. Mm-hmm. We have millions of millions of our citizens who have been refugees. You will be refugees in camps in Pakistan. You will be refugees in camps in Iran. You're born, you're raised. You're not allowed to even go to school because no. you don't have the proper documentation. Or you cannot travel anywhere because you don't have the passport and all of that. So it's so difficult for people yeah. to grasp that, that feeling that yeah. you don't have a home. You have a home, but you don't have a home. Like it, it's like you, you want to go back there in your own country, but you can't. I know a lot of people who have left Afghanistan. Yeah. And I know that every single one of them, if they had an opportunity to have a normal life, a normal life meaning that their lives are not under threat, that they could at least live, they would continue. This epidemic of the coronavirus that is uh, going all around the world, uh, where people are forced to, do, to be isolated in their homes, and restricted from going uh, around their daily daily routines. And like in many countries, you have to have paperwork and ID to show to the police. That's very unusual in the West. Maybe this period will uh, uh, change mindset of many people, what it means to, uh, you know, to be stripped of your, the freedom of movement that you take for granted. But, and maybe, it will create uh, empathy. I think that's that's one of the secrets of uh, the secret things of literature and and art that it plants empathy. <laughs> it yeah. makes empathy cells in your brain, and suddenly you empathize with people you don't know because you you know their story through their art. And it becomes personal. It does. Uh, it does. Iceland, Iceland is a weird kind of place to, to be born in and live in. It's an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The climate here is really harsh. We have uh, eruptions and earthquakes. And, and sometimes it feels like, like being here, feels like you know, being on a different planet. Sometimes, you know, you will see maps and Iceland isn't even on the world maps. It's just wow. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's so few people and it's uh, so far away and so remote. Living here, I sometimes, you know, felt like, you know, I was suffocating from this being so far away from everything. When I tried living abroad, I lived in Sweden. I really like Sweden and I lived there for two years. And I was homesick. You know, I, I wanted to travel to my faraway planet. <laughs> <laughs> the place that you were born, raised, and then you have lived all your life. And you know every yeah. single street and every single bakery and restaurant and people know you. So I think that is a completely different feeling. We have a bigger enemy now, the viruses that we can even not see. Uh, so that uh, it gives the humanity a chance to be more, as you said, with empathy, with kindness, with love. People are going to realize better that, like we humanity, we are uh, one species and we're one family because we have a mutual enemy, and it's not 
each and every one of us, it's it's stuff like virus. For instance, here in here in Iceland, hugging is forbidden. Yeah. So, That's so cool. uh, like when I when I watch like a television series or something, and people are hugging or shaking hands and stuff, and it it feels like weird. Really yeah. <laughs> you know, because when I go like I go and visit my mother-in-law, she is she is eighty-three, so she's in total isolation we go to her we bring her groceries you know we have gloves on and uh we don't hug her and it's just you know something we took for granted before you know to get a hug but now we can't i think people will appreciate hugs in a completely different way when this is all over (laughs) exactly i think humanity needed this break to just like think through some of the stuff, some of the things that we do, and uh, especially we were taking it for granted. The, the human touch, the connection, the friendships, the hug, the, the relationships. The new world will be, hopefully, will be more kind, uh, uh, friendlier to, to everyone. Uh, what we did here, uh, politically, uh, with the best party, was like, you know, groups of uh, artists, me as a comedian, uh, running for an office and became mayor. To some people, didn't matter much. Like small country, a comedian in Ukraine was inspired by my story, and he decided to run for president, Volodymyr Zelensky. Yes. And he became he became the president yes. of Ukraine. What one person does can be inspiring to another person. I would love to see more artists go political. I would think it, you know, I, 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 would, I would love to see it, for instance, in America. I mean, they have all these entertainers and <laughs> comedians. And, and why, why are they stuck on television? Why, why aren't they out there, you know, taking part? Why don't they but run? They're, they're, quite, they're quite famous as well. They, people love yeah, 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 yeah. Jimmy so, Fallon, Trevor Noah, all of these people are... <laughs> You know, he stand in front of Trump and make fun of him. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> and win a debate against him. You know, we are more connected in the world right now than we were ever before. Uh, yes. So we, we get inspired. We get the stories, your stories, Zelensky's story, and these stories travel all over the world in just a matter of minutes. And then yes. people get inspired. Uh, yes. So hopefully there will be more. I, I'm sure there will be more. I've been watching a lot of TV recently. I just <laughs> watched this, <laughs> this movie um, from South Korea, uh, The Parasite. Have you watched uh, it? Para- yeah, 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 I've seen it. Yeah, I, I really like Parasite. It was, a, it was an amazing movie. There was one podcast, I, uh, it's called uh, The Other Latif. It's a guy, uh, I think his family is from Morocco uh, and he grew up in the US. And his name is Latif. So there is a web page called something like How Many of Me. And he Googles his name on this website, How Many of Me. And he finds out there's uh, another guy with exactly the same name. This other Latif is a a prisoner in, in Guantanamo Bay in the prison camp. Wow. Wow. So he goes on a mission to try to get in contact with the other Latif. And it's just amazing. He goes everywhere. He goes to Afghanistan. Uh, He goes to Morocco. He he travels all over the world. Uh, And it was just breathtaking. It was something I binged. I do it when I walk my dog. And he got a really long walk. Uh, Wow. wow. I would love to. Now I have something to... To listen to so thank you so much thank you <laughs> it's been a pleasure, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it was, yeah. i've never been on a blind date before uh and Same but, here. <laughs> <laughs> but i really enjoyed talking to you i hope to be able to uh, welcome you here in iceland or to visit you and your group in in afghanistan hopefully 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 Thank you so much, and then have a nice rest of the day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.